Grace, peace, welcome to Emmanuel today. Um, as you've noticed, Pastor Brad is not physically here with us. Unfortunately, his pneumonia came back a few days ago, so he is recuperating and watching us on Facebook. He asked me to present um, the service here for us today. Um, we do send him well wishes and a speedy recovery and look forward to having um, Brad back n next week. Does anyone have any um, other announcements they would like to share? Seeing. There it is. Okay. Join me. A love that never ceases. A creativity that designs the universe. A hope that cannot be quenched. Suit of reconciliation, no matter the cost. These are the things that are God. Let us worship with God. Please join me in our Still speaking, God, our world is so full of noise and we sometimes cannot hear your voice. Political winds of distress blow us about with hurricane force. We are anxious and we live as people encased in our fear. Forgive discouragement, encourage us to hope, surround us with your peace. Help us live large out of the gospel story that claims us and calls us to be your people these very times. We pray, as always, in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone who is in Christ, which is everyone, is a new creation altogether. The old is finished and gone. Everything has become new. This is the gospel, the good news of grace, by which we are redeemed and made whole, and for which we all say... Thanks be to God. Our first song is Blessed Assurance.
Our readings today come from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, and we're 20 to uh, 31. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed as, at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it's impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Sorry, yeah. Hard okay. Hey. As he was settling out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked, and he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. So the sermon today that Brad prepared is one tiny, tiny thing. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him. There is urgency here. Maybe this man has been watching Jesus for a while, trying to get up the nerve to ask his question. Maybe he sees Jesus leaving town and realizes it's now or never. If he's going to get the answer, he has to ask it right now. So he runs up to Jesus, kneels before him, and asks the question, the big question. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, this is an aside, but it is very important. Before we can get anywhere with this story, to first understand the question. This man is not asking, Jesus, what must I do to get to heaven when I die? Going to heaven was not his concern. What he wants is eternal life. An eternal life, as far as the gospel of Mark is concerned, is not heaven, in the sky when you die, or at the very least, it's not only that. The New Testament phrase, eternal life, is two Greek words, zoe, ioing. Zoe is the Greek word for life, as in zoology, and ioing is Greek for age or ages. Our word eon comes from here. Dioning is Bible speak, is a really long time, but it's not forever. In Jesus' day, you, Jesus day, you see, Dioning was a code phrase. It referred to the age to come, or the age of the Messiah. So what the man is asking is not, what do I do to get into heaven, but how can I live the life now that we will have all have when the Messiah comes. Eternal life, you see, at least as the story presents it, is not for the future only. It is also, and especially for today. This man is seeking meaning and purpose and happiness in his life today. 
This whole question, if you were to give a more literal translation to Mark's Greek words, would sound something like this. What should I be doing now to be enjoying now the gift of eternal life, the life God wants to give me now? He knew he was missing something. Jesus knew he was missing something too. And he begins to reveal it to him, but slowly. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. To be honest, that was probably the answer he was expecting, but it was not the answer he wanted to hear because the commandments were already part of his life, had always been part, been the center of his life. But he knows from experience and keeping the commandments, at least as he has been doing it, has not brought the life he's looking for. It hasn't worked for him. He doesn't think it can work. He says to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him. Most people who come to Jesus with question didn't elicit this response because most of the time they were trying to trip him up, trap him in his own words. This man is different. He really wants to live. He wants to feel God's heart beating in his own chest. Jesus sees this. He sees a 13th disciple kneeling before him, and he makes the offer. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. A little thing? Really an itty-bitty, teeny tiny little thing? Almost nothing next to the life you seek. I mean, I wouldn't even mention it except did ask, you last lack one thing. Go home, take everything you own, give it all away. Be content with the treasure you already have in heaven. Then come back and we'll go for a wall, long walk together. Come, follow me. He's close, so close. What must I do to find life? Was his question. What's it worth to you? Jesus wants to know. Everything, he says. Everything? Really? Then take everything and get rid of it because it's in your way. Come, be with me, and I'll show you how to live. Eternal life, Jesus is saying. The life of the ages, the life worth living, can be found in the living, the Jesus way. Life is discipleship. Discipleship is life. But... When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many, many possessions. Shocked, and I think unbearably sad, because he was holding on tight to a great many things, and he couldn't bring himself to let it go. What must I do now to enjoy now the life desires for me? The answer to his desperate question was standing right in front of him, urging him to take it and to live it. Here's life, Jesus said. It's free. You can have it. No inheritance needed. It's all right here. But his arms were already so full, he had no room for the gift. What are we passionate about? That's a good question for us to consider. For the man in the story, it was money and possessions. But it could be anything. Fame, power, fear, greed, sex, food, the certainty that you're right, your country, your candidate, your church, it could be anything. But whatever it is, Jesus says, if it's in your way, let it go. Let it go and follow me. I've always hoped that when the man got home, he looked around at all his stuff and thought again about what Jesus, the offer Jesus made. And I hope that maybe he had second thoughts. He decided, after all, to let it all go so he would be free be disciple number 13. And maybe that happened. We don't know. But that's not the ending of the story we get here. He goes away sad. He makes his choice, but he does not choose life. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. They were perplexed because in their world, to be wealthy was to be already be part of the kingdom of God. 
be wealthy meant you have been blessed by God. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now this is a metaphor, of course, but its meaning is clear. A camel cannot go through the eye of a needle. It's quite impossible. A rich person cannot find the way into the kingdom life Jesus offered this particular rich man. It is quite impossible. The disciples were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then, who can be saved? This was unthinkable to them. The image of a wealthy person stumbling around in the dark, unable to find the door into the kingdom of God, was beyond their comprehension. To be fair, though, the only reason Jesus is talking here about wealthy people is because he has been talking to a wealthy person. If you read the rest of the Gospels, you will see that the middle class people are no no more likely to find their own way through the door. Even poor people cannot find their way home. But that, don't you see, is a whole point of the story. No one inherits internal life. It doesn't require any doing. No one, rich or poor, powerful or weak. The kingdom of God is a gift, always a gift. This life is always a gift. What must I do, the man asked. Don't do, Jesus said. Live. Life is free, like the air. So breathe already. Breathe in God's spirit as the Sunday school song goes, and breathe out God's peace. Open your arms and embrace life, keeping in mind that when you do, whatever you're holding up to want will fall from your grasp. And that's okay. Let it go. Whatever it is, you don't need it. Life, Zoe Ioing, the life of the ages is better than stuff, whatever your stuff happens to be. For the disciples, though, this is a puzzle of epic proportions. Then who can be saved? And this is their question, don't you see? If a rich man can't get into the kingdom, then what about me? Jesus looked at them and said, I'm pretty sure there was a big smile on his face. For mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Amen. So we're at the part of our service where um, we'll share um, prayer concerns that we have. Um, I'm going to start with a few. First, I'd like to say prayers for my uh, dad. Um, went um, into a nursing home last week. It's been a very huge adjustment for all of us, so I ask um, prayers for our family. Um, on a good note, my son Nick and his wife Bree are due to have their baby this week, so we're very help- um, excited to welcome um, our fifth grandchild. Um, Nick shared with me the other day that everything's going good. Um, They're not going to let her go past next Sunday. Um, And then he went to the store and bought a gallon of milk, and the milk expiration was October 22nd. And he said, this is crazy. I'm having a baby before this milk expires. (laughs) And so I thought that was a really cute story. (laughs) Also like to say prayers for the Delbert Steiner family. Um, Delbert passed away this week, and his funeral was yesterday, Fayette. Um, I'd also want to say prayers for our farmers, um, that they continue to have a safe and bountiful um, harvest. Does anyone else have any prayers that they'd like to share? Irving, my son, is going to have a new knee replacement at St. Mary's Hospital tomorrow. And I pray for him because he is not the prime cam- candidate for surgery, so I hope all goes well. Thank you.
I just think we need to give Joanne a big thank you. For those of you who don't know, like two years ago when COVID hit, she stepped up into the president position. So she was doing that. She was trying to get an interim pastor here. She's been on the strategic planning committee. She's on the search committee. In the midst, she gets COVID. Bruce gets COVID. She's still here today to fill in for Pastor Brad. So I think as a congregation, we all owe Joanne a huge thank you. It is my pleasure to help all of you. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other prayer, requests, concerns, any gratitude that you want to share today? Yes, there was a fundraiser yesterday for uh, Brandy's daughter, Raina, um, for spina bifida. Um, does anyone know how it went? Lots of people. That's great to hear. So it was a wonderful event. So, so glad to hear. Um, prayers to Brandy as well as she is also battling COVID, um, and she's doing better from what I understand. Please bow your heads as we pray. Lord of heaven, help us surrender our souls into your hands. We ask for courage and peace to know that our internal future rests with you. For you have promised that God so loved the world, he gave his only son that believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. May you look upon our deaths as a gift of eternal life. Keep us from walking in fear as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Give us faith to believe that death has no victory over us. Death has no sting. Help us not to be worried about times and dates, knowing very well that the day of the Lord will indeed come like a thief at night. May we simply be prepared for what lies ahead by being self-controlled and alert. May we keep watch as Jesus warned, believing that the Son of Man will come in an hour when we do not expect him. No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Therefore, may we always keep watch and be ready. May we not let our hearts be troubled, trusting that Jesus has gone to his Father's house to prepare a place for us. And if he has gone to prepare a place for us, he will come back and take us to be with him, that we also may be where he is. Help us trust that we can have followed the Father. We'll have an inheritance, the kingdom prepared for us since the creation of the world. May we rest in the promise that you will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will, there will be no more mourning or cry, crying or pain. You are the bread of life, the bread that comes from heaven, which is a man, which a man may eat, and not die. Because of you, we will live forever. Please hear our prayers today and bless them with your healing touch. We thank you that you are able to bring hope, even through the toughest times, and strengthening, strengthening us for a purpose, for your purpose. We come in gratitude today and ask you to hear the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offering this morning, you can drop off at the back of the church out greatly see your hand at work the world around us loving God and we offer our hands to help make use of our gifts and our lives so that your kingdom will continue to grow on earth as it is in heaven amen
And our closing song is The Solid Rock. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen.